A recent poll of 3,000 people conducted by the Living Wage Foundation found that over half of UK adults saving into the pension believe they will never be able to retire and 62% feel they would work even past retirement age. Today we will look at this report but most importantly we would also look at what we should do so that we won't be part of these nasty statistics. From my conversations with people, it's very clear that most people actually fall into one of three camps when it comes to retirement planning. The first camp would say something like, I'm not thinking about retirement and the reason for this kind of thoughts would vary from I am either too young to be thinking about that kind of things or I beg, let me enjoy my life now, we will think about this stuff later on. Or honestly, I don't even know where to start. This whole thing just sounds too complicated. And then you have the second camp and this group has some awareness when it comes to retirement and all of that. And they have actually thought about it and maybe they've even started contributing to a pension scheme, but they are not really sure if they are doing enough or if what they are doing is even right in the first place. They might even be putting in here and there in different spots and it's still a guessing game for them. Many people in this group can even be close to retirement and this set of people are actually a lot more stressed. They are the ones that are thinking, wait, do I have enough saved? Then you now have the third group of people that have a plan, they have a strategy and they are working towards that plan actively. I am 100% certain that this third group of people are not part of that statistics we spoke about earlier. So what are we going to do here? We'll look at the statistics, but I will also show you what you need to do so that you won't be part of that 53% that are not sure. When I came across this from The Guardian, it just reinforced my thoughts that a lot of us actually need to look more closely into our retirement plan. And just for full transparency, I'm going to be linking the reports in the description if you want to read it for yourself. The truth is, when you see a report like this that says there is a 60% jump in how much you need in your pension pot just to have a basic retirement, and you also see headline news that says inflation is now 2.2%, you just know that there is something wrong. Both statements cannot just be right at the same time. Something is actually wrong somewhere. The fact is your real inflation is actually not 2.2% and all you have to do is just look at the cost of things that you buy daily. Rice, milk, bread, all of that. Another thing to think about is if the cost of retirement according to this research has jumped by 60% in just three years and wages have not risen that fast, then how do we bridge the gap? These are the issues. Many people are already struggling with day-to-day -day cost of living, whether it's rent, food, energy bills. So even the idea of saving for retirement feels almost impossible. And here's the thing, the longer we actually delay planning and taking action for retirement, the harder it actually becomes. What do I mean by this? Let me give you an example. Imagine two people, Sarah and John. Sarah starts saving for her retirement at age 25 and John on the other hand waits until he's 35 to start saving. They both aim to retire at 65 and plan to contribute the same amount, let's say £200 a month. They both invest in similar portfolios with an average annual return of 7%. Now, even though Sarah and John are putting in the same amount of money every month, the difference in their final retirement pot is actually massive. By the time Sarah reaches 65, her investments have had 40 years to grow because of the power of compound interest. Her retirement fund would have grown to about £524,000. John, on the other hand, that started 10 years later, only has about 30 years for his investment to grow. And at the time of retirement, his investment pot will be around £245,000. There is a difference of nearly £280,000, even though Sarah and John contributed the same amount each month. The difference is time. 
So what that means is the earlier you start, the easier it is actually and the bigger your pot would be at the point of retirement. But before we go any further, what exactly is basic retirement according to this report? What does it actually mean? Essentially, we are just talking about having enough to cover your essential costs. You know, things like keeping a roof over your head, putting food on the table, paying your utility bills, and of course, being able to get around and hopefully you have a little leftover just for unexpected costs. They put this figure at around 13.5 thousand pounds annually for singles and 20,600 pounds annually for couples. But they also assume that each of these groups would get the full state pension. And if you combine the full state pension, that will come down to an annual income of 25,000 for singles and 43,000 for couples. Now, let's back up for a minute and assume, for example, that there won't be a state pension when you retire, which is a reality that is coming up pretty fast. Using the 4% rule, you would need a pot of 1 million naira for a couple to retire and 625,000 for singles to retire with the basic retirement. This is the reality. So for those of us who are picturing something even a bit more enjoyable, you know, maybe a holiday or two, engaging in some hobbies, maybe even helping out family members, we will definitely need a bigger nest egg or need to be flexible in order to be able to achieve this goal. And I spoke about all of that in the video that you can see on the screen and you can also find it in the description. But what is the way out? I've spoken about the problem, there is inflation problem and the cost of things are going up. State pension might not be there to support what is the way out. The first point is to address those people that think that the future is out there. I don't have to think about retirement at the moment. The truth is the future is coming. You won't be 25 or 35 forever. We are all going to get old and we won't be able to work again. So you need to set up assets that will be able to do the work for you instead of you doing the work yourself. Pension is a very important asset that you can set up, but there are also other assets that can help you and a combination of all of these assets would actually give you options. In this video, I spoke about nine assets that are making the rich even richer. Things like property, commodities, building a business, which could be from starting a side also, just to mention if you can watch that video to look at the full list and see how you can apply it to yourself. The next step to do is like to actually get knowledgeable about the accounts that are available to you. Most importantly, tax advantage accounts. You want to take advantage of tax accounts like your ISA, your LISAs, your pension. So to those people that think that this is just overwhelming, I don't know what to do. It's not that hard, trust me. All you have to do is to watch a few videos, read a couple of books, give yourself time to actually learn these things. And before you know it, you'll be better than 99.9%. One of my favorite books would be How to Own the World. Or you can also subscribe to my newsletter where I will break down financial tips on a weekly basis. Sometimes I would answer your questions, summarize key lessons from books and things that I've learned and also share how I'm moving along this journey to retirement also. You can find the link to the newsletter also in the description. Next, if you feel like you're not contributing enough, you need to do something to be able to change that. And there are two parts that you can take. Either you earn more and then you are able to save that difference into your future or you cut back and you're able to also save the difference. For most people, cutting back is where you'll get the quickest win, but there is a limit to how much you can cut back. So you need to prioritize anymore. That's very important. Look inside the accounts that you're using for retirement also. That is the next step. Whether it's an ISA or a pension or LISA, make sure your money is working as hard as it can for you. In this video, I share how people are losing as much as £180,000 over their lifetime by investing in default funds and that position 
was also confirmed in the report that we looked at today. Look at this. Our assumed return on savings in retirement is based on assumptions used in the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA's prescribed projections and the balanced asset mix suggested as a central scenario. Take a note of the balanced asset mix that they're talking about. We also assume that individuals are making pension contribution in line with auto enrollment policy. What I'm trying to show you is that the investments are quite conservative and by just changing the funds from the default funds, which is what the reports used to run its analysis, you would actually be better off. The last thing I want to mention here is this is your life we are talking about. The responsibility for your life is not on the government, neither is it your employer or your children, but yourself 100%. If you want to take control and don't know what to do, there are videos in the description and our investing playlist is actually a good resource to start. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter as I will be sharing tips. Until next time.